So, all right, everything stems to change management and everything stems from Microsoft. Now, I shadowed somebody at Microsoft way back in like the early 2000s, the mid 2000s, 2005, whatever. And they were in the change management process of where they were going to migrate operating systems from the old into the new. And so I forget what the old system was, but the new system was Longhorn, which is, which is, I think was Microsoft Vista at the time. Okay. And so Microsoft is run by Bill Gates. They have a lot of different operating system data as well as applications and then specific communication tools like email. I think, is it Facebook? I don't know if Facebook's part of Microsoft, but they also have like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all of that. So they have a lot of great tools for communication as well as our own browser, which I don't really use. But all of Microsoft deals with viruses. They deal with information. Viruses are only information. They don't have to be bad. The only reason why people think they're bad is because they don't know how to upgrade to the new, to the new data, to the new evolution, because they have archaic devices. So when Microsoft does their change management program, program process, when they go into companies like the um, Employment Development Department in California, which I've shadowed this person, I've shadowed them at Chevron, an oil corporation, where they're trying to implement from the enterprise level to the service level, a new operating system that everyone then has to get on board. There has to be meetings. There has to be um, a, an inventory of every single communication device from remote places to local places and all geographical time zones and everything. So there's a lot of people have to be getting on board to get to migrate to the new operating system. And so that's exactly what this virus is right now that we're dealing with COVID-19. It's a new operating system. And the change management process that these companies like Microsoft or Apple or whatever, when they go into companies, it's usually years and years and years before they actually release and roll out the actual data. So you've heard about software rollouts and new upgrades and patches to the system and waiting for the, you know, the company to give them a new revision or a new type of operating system to that's supposed to be better, faster, stronger, whatever. And that's the same thing with what's going on with the virus right now. We have been primed through a change management process through the conspiracy world, as well as all the activism. And then the rollout was 2020. Now, in the future, okay, so right now, as far as viruses and reproduction, every single time you've been exposed to a virus, it'll either increase your fertility or it will accelerate you towards menopause. It's just relative to where you are on the timeline of the lifespan that you believe in at this point in time. So when, you, when you're when you relatively young, then you're going to see puberty probably come earlier. You're going to see uh, women probably are more fertile, okay, which means that they're still viable, they still can hold life, and that baby is able to evolve to that new evolution. Now, not all babies survive. Some do and some don't. It just depends on the predispositions of the mother. But viruses serve to change the environment, upgrade it to the level of, of, of the evolution, of to its action potential. And so humans have to evolve to that level of, of intention, level of evolution. And so let's say fast forward in the future, we have 500 million people and everyone's segregated in their own little bubbles, okay? Because 500 million in a world that's so huge, like this world that can hold 7 billion, you're going to be in your little bubble. And so that's how they can control reproduction carefully because then they can release a new upgrade, get everybody, let's say there's like, like 2,000 people in your, in your community, if everyone is on the same page, working at the same level, um, they're, they're all doing jelly juice, they're, they're not traveling too much, they're kind of staying where they are, staying put, and no one's fertile, no one's dying, and no one's reproducing, and then they want to go and upgrade that community, well, what's going to happen is they're going to bring in someone or release a virus that's going to upgrade that community. People are going to feel their evolution and, yes, be fertile. And then how you can then support that fertility is with J-Juice and the food supply to help that baby become a very functioning member of that society, completely assimilated and never going on the decline. But why would you release a virus in the environment to upgrade? It just depends on what's going on. You know, maybe they're anticipating that there's going to be migration people coming this way and they want to prepare that population to be able to adapt to that new migration. 
it just all depends on the geography and the policies of the day and all that stuff. So right now we're seeing people at different levels of evolution and de-evolution. And so, yeah, there's really not a way to really control the, the, the feelings of evolution. And then if you're already believing that you should die, then the action potential from the virus and the therapeutics are going to accelerate your belief system. They're going to accelerate entropy or they're going to celebrate, accelerate nejentropy, which is then the coalescing of the body parts to where now you're not going to be falling apart. You're going to be reversing the aging process because the aging process is the body going into chaos and death. And then the nejentropy process is where the body is finally coalescing back together the way it was meant to. And that is related to Newton's first law of motion, where what's at rest stays at rest, what's in motion stays in motion, and then you can redirect, always redirect, and that's action versus reaction. And then for every action, there's equal and opposite reaction. So you have Newton's law of motion already explaining to you how this works. Every single change has been a catalyst of something. Evolution has been a catalyst from some kind of action. Though you don't know what it is, people make up stories of what was the catalyst to evolution. But when you think about it, there's a form of higher intelligence, but still it does trace back to a single point of origin of which we don't even know what was the first chemical reaction in this universe to then cause this chain reaction of evolution. Of which now, we're just like one of many probably civilizations that rose and fell because no one really figured out how to harness the elements correctly. And so probably that's why there's human experimentation, alien experimentation, and people just looking to religious belief systems to justify and rationalize why they're here, when they're gonna, what happens when they die. All right, I figured out. Now I gotta write about it. Okay, bye.